Hi everybody and welcome to a new week. If you're watching these as they come out, it's uh, great to be with you again. And um, well, here we go. Now, it's a common story, isn't it? It's a common story element, isn't it? Of the, the child who doesn't fully know their family, they're, they're rejected, um, they don't know of uh, the power and the authority and of the welcome of their family. They don't know um, who they truly are, perhaps. But what they do know is they certainly can't go back because they have been removed. And then there's the subplot going on that in the real family, of course, they do want that child back, but that child is lost uh, and people are out searching for that child and that child is, is, is wanted back in the family again. And we see this story repeated in different ways, in different formats, in, in different books and different films all over. And of course, it is actually the story of the gospel, because the story of the gospel is of people that don't know, that, that perhaps often feel they're not good enough for God. They, they're not acceptable to God. They don't meet his standards. And so... Um, are miles away from God and certainly don't feel they could come back to the family. Some people feel they couldn't even come back inside a church building or wouldn't want to come back inside a church building. And, and, and one, of the, one of the strong passions that we should have as we're coming out of this lockdown is how do we make our places where we do gather and our homes, how do we make them welcoming and accepting so that people don't feel they can't be part of that but actually they realize they can be because that's really what is coming out of what uh, is in God's word for us today. There is this complete acceptance from God, not because of what we've done, but because of what he has done, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Now, it's talking about Jesus here when it says we're in Colossians chapter one, and I'm going to start at verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Him, of course, in this chapter, it's quite clear if you read back, him being Jesus, the son, as he's referred to. So all the fullness of God dwells in Jesus and through Jesus to reconcile to himself, to God, all things, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. It is the cross that is literally the crux of the matter, the central point where the blood is shed and all the covenants that were made in the, the, the Davidic, the, Abra the Abrahamic, can't say that properly, all the covenants of the Old Testament that maybe you've been listening to they, uh, Richard and Joyce's teaching here on Light to North YouTube channel, they all come to a fulfillment in the new covenant which comes through the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross. Now, this is the issue. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour. Like that child that feels they can't go back to the family, that they're not wanted in the family. How, it's how a lot of people feel. I mean, some will say, I'm not interested in God. I want nothing to do with God. I want nothing to do with religion. But, you know, I always feel and I believe and the Bible reveals that inside of us is this longing for reconciliation, this longing to be back together again. And it's because that's exactly what is there from God, that, that, that wanting. And we can put layers of things over the top of it. But actually, God himself wants to be reconciled with us. And that desire is there within us. But the problem is, as it says here, you were alienated from God and were enemies in your own minds because of your evil behavior. Isn't that an interesting expression, in your own minds? I mean, people know, most people know that the way they live, the, the lifestyle that they have, the things that go on are things that are pushing them away from God. And even as Christians, if we choose to live in the ways that are not of God, it, it sort of pushes us away. We, we, we find it hard to get in there and like that child of numerous films and stories we feel like we can't possibly get back to the family then comes the next sentence which here in the niv starts with but so you felt like you're alienated from god in your minds because of your evil behavior 
but but now he that's god has reconciled you rejoined you reconnected you if you will accept and believe it by christ's physical body remember all the fullness of god dwelt within christ and he was then surrendered everything that he had the incarnate god on the cross by christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation you see all that stuff as it says here that goes on in our minds that feels we're not acceptable by god or not acceptable to one another or not acceptable to the church it is a lie it is not the truth it is fake news as somebody might say but he has reconciled you that's what the cross is about the price being paid that we are free from accusation nobody can point at us and say you 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 with any validity i mean the most common one that does that is the enemy of the brethren the devil but our minds can do it our own minds can make accusations against us but the death of jesus on the cross says you are free from accusation every accusation is a lie and instead you are presented holy in his sight you're washed clean by god himself we can't get our lives sorted out so that we can get to god it's god that makes us holy in fact it even says here without blemish i mean last week the last one we looked at was talking about the when jesus come back and being caught up and getting our new bodies those new bodies will be without blemish but even now here on this earth in god's sight he sees that future victory and sees us holy without blemish and free from accusation which is why we can come before god as dearly beloved children that he just wants to be reconciled with so you're free from accusation if you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel this hope that we've been talking about as this is our last week of four of talking about our sure and certain hope we hold on to that hope we continue in that faith established and firm you say so does this mean then if i start to have doubts um i'm no longer good enough that 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 so that yeah that's it i have doubts i'm out the door no, it's not talking about that at all. Your doubt cannot overcome what God has done. You've placed your faith in him and you continue to be in him so that your mind doesn't kind of turn yourself, what, turn yourself away from God. You're like that child sometimes in the story. You think, oh, I, I, I'm not acceptable. I can't go back to the family. The truth is every time by what Jesus has done on the cross, we can come back to the father this is the good news this is the gospel every one can come back to the father it says here this is the gospel you've heard and has been proclaimed throughout creation and of which i paul have become a servant why has paul changed so dramatically from a completely different upbringing a completely different understanding because he's realized the hope of the gospel is reconciliation for all peoples everywhere through what jesus has done on the cross no one can point to your sin no one can point to your doubt no one can point to your failings no one can point to anything that is to do with you because the only thing you can point at is a man hanging on a cross dying his blood dripping from his body that same precious blood that has paid the price it is done it is accomplished there is nothing about you that is no longer not good enough because what is good enough is you in christ you've now been placed into christ and you're part of a new family to live out what god has done in you with that new hope because of who you are holy in his sight without blemish and free free from accusation what a wonderful promise what a wonderful gift church i hope you've enjoyed this walk in this truth 
and you'll, might, you'll be free from that accusations of mine that you don't belong. Can I just tell you, it's not about you, it's about Jesus, and that's why you belong. God bless you, everybody. Keep safe, and see you in the next video.